Hi guys, Roxana from the blog AcquaintLife.com and today I have for you another What We Eat in a Week video. Starting with a chicken, I just decided a lot of times I like to just get the whole chicken because you can really get a lot out of one chicken and I'm going to show you how I do that in this video. Um, one way is to obviously just roast the chicken. I'm not really a huge fan of roast chicken, but it's super easy to do and my daughter really loves it, so I do do it. Um, I just start with putting some onions, some potatoes. Today I'm going to use little baby carrots, but I couldn't find the whole carrot from the store today. So I just put those in, um, put some olive oil, you can even use melted butter, salt and pepper, and I put the chicken directly on top and I bake that off. And I like to put, just like I do when I have a Thanksgiving turkey, I like to put a little bit of butter under the skin and um, just gives it a little bit better flavor. So I bake that off and that's what we had that day. For the next day, I used the stock that I made from the carcass of the bird. Um, I picked the chicken clean, I put the extra shredded chicken in a side bowl, a Tupperware bowl, for another meal in itself, and with today's meal we're having risotto, which we are using the bone broth from that chicken I made at the beginning of the week. This recipe for the mushroom and bacon risotto is actually directly from the blog. So I will link that one at the bottom here if you'd like the full recipe for this. This one is a really delicious recipe. It's mushroom, it's thyme, a bit of bacon, and risotto. Um, it cooks real slow, it cooks inside the broth, it slowly absorbs it, so you just basically have the ladle um, handy and you just ladle your warm broth into the pot, give it a stir, and your risotto, if you stir it continuously, it will come out nice and creamy and have that consistency that you like when having your risotto. So next recipe is another bacon recipe, but it's a more of a fall recipe. I wanted to incorporate some fall flavors on this video because of course we are into fall in October and I had uh, the rest of the bacon pack to use anyhow for this recipe. And this one is my pumpkin and bacon pasta. This one is so delicious and it's really super easy to make. You just do, I'm doing penne pasta, but you could use bow tie pasta. I've used spaghetti pasta for this. Um, any pasta you like really. I put that into a saucepan on the side um, to boil up the noodles and then in another pan I am cooking up the bacon first taking the crispy bacon out I did chop it first as you can see and then put a little bit of flour inside the bacon grease there to thicken up the sauce then I added my cream and my garlic and I kind of let it bubble up together I put a little bit of salt in there and then the pumpkin and just kind of let it come together into a really good sauce and I did a little pinch of cinnamon there at the end to kind of give it that warmth and fall flavor. I added the pasta to that sauce, tossed it around, gar garnished it with some of the bacon, and then also put the bacon into the pasta to toss along with the sauce as well. So it's kind of throughout the pasta and it's a cute little garnish on the top, but it is a really good one for fall and just for having a fun pasta dish. And using the leftover chicken from the roasted chicken earlier in the week, I am just going to make a roux by melting butter, sprinkling in some flour, whisking it around a bit, and adding some cream, and then finally that shredded chicken with some salt and pepper. Then I'm going to toss it into some pasta and top with parm. And it's a perfect, easy meal to use up that chicken. For a Friday night, we're doing a steak with herb butter, and that sounds very fancy. It looks very fancy, but it's actually very simple to make. And this one is another one direct from the blog. Again, it will be linked below, but it's super simple. I like to just put a little bit of a marinade together in the bowl and then place my steak in that. And then on a separate bowl, I do the butter, the fresh herbs, the garlic, and I mix it all together. And I put it inside a little bit of a plastic wrap, roll it up until kind of a roll so I can slice it up later almost like cookie dough and I pop it back into the fridge and while the meat's kind of sitting and soaking in the marinade, um, getting ready for the grill, 
the butter is kind of hardening a little bit so that way I can slice it up and toss it on top of the hot steak and it just melts into this really delicious sauce um, that's on top of our sliced grilled steak. So using a cast iron grill pan, of course, when the steak's ready, um, I throw it on the, the cast iron grill pan, make sure the grill pan's nice and hot to get those really pretty grill marks and to make sure it's cooked really nicely and charred really nicely on the outside. I like to cook my steak to about a medium. Um, and then on top, I just put the, the chopped herb butter right on top. And again, the full recipe will be in the link in the description below. I paired this with another recipe direct from the blog, which is a cream spinach. Um, this one's super simple to do. I just do eight cups of fresh spinach, and then I put it into a pan, melted butter, cook it up a bit, salt, pepper it, and then I'm gonna add garlic and cream to this and let it um, kind of thicken up with a bit of flour there as well. And it just becomes a delicious cream spinach that goes perfectly on the side of this sliced grilled um, sirloin steak with herb butter sauce. Next up is brand new to the blog. It is my glazed meatloaf. I'm gonna start off by making the glaze. I'm gonna heat up just a cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of brown sugar, two cloves of garlic, and a half a teaspoon of garlic salt. Now I'm gonna to put together the meatloaf itself. I'm gonna do a couple eggs, a pinch of salt, a cup of breadcrumbs there. I got some black pepper. And finally, a bit of the glaze. I'm gonna get it all mixed up and I'm gonna put it into my cast iron skillet. I'm gonna be using the 10 inch, it fits perfectly in there. And I'm gonna pop it into the oven for 25 minutes. Okay, so it's been 25 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest of that glaze on top of it and cover it completely and pop it back into the oven for another 15 minutes. To serve alongside, I'm just heating up some leftover rice from earlier in the week. And here's the final product. All right, guys, so that is it. That is a week's worth of meals. Um, you can, again, find the links to any of the recipes that you want to try here in the description below that are directly from the blog. I appreciate you watching. Please let me know if you like this video so that I know to make more content like this by giving it a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button because every single week I post new content like this with from scratch recipes, natural home remedies, and garden growing. Thanks again for watching.